Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Cindy Daychuk here with Queen Bee Creations and we are gonna be making some Christmas cards today. So I have some pre-folded, I don't know if these brown ones are gonna work well or not, but you know what, I may try them. Um, but I have some other cards. This is just folded card stock. Um, we will be having to add an insert page. I'll talk about that once we're done. But in essence, what we're gonna do, um, we are gonna be using some needle and thread. Now, if you follow me, you know I am not a sewer. I do not like to sew. I do some projects that require sewing, but it's really minimal low skill. So if you're high skilled, you can go more detailed than this. <laughs> if you're not already, um, if you're not high skilled, then follow along with me. <laughs> so what we're gonna need, we need some kind of paper uh, card stock, not so thick that it's gonna drive you nuts putting the needle through it. You're gonna need some kind of thread. Now I do have a, a little box of embroidery floss that I'll probably use, but I also saw that there's like some of this um, crochet yarn that you could use from the dollar store. I think that they've got some packets of embroidery floss there too. You could use that. You could use um, fine ribbon. You could use yarn, whatever you have. Um, and in essence, we're gonna make some Christmas tree cards. And I just sketched out some simple designs that I thought may be possible for me to replicate. <laughs> So I'm gonna be, you know, you know me, I, I plan kind of ahead, you know, draw these out. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be following. I am gonna take you in overhead so that you can see as we go. If you think that you'd have trouble translating this to this without drawing some lines on it, then by all means, take a pencil and just lightly kind of sketch out stop and start lines. And, and I will do that for things like um, this, where I wanna make sure I need, leave enough space to do a star if I think I'm capable of that. And I'll maybe do um, little dots for start and stopping, just so that I can follow along with the ruler and that things look sort of centered. But that's me being a little anal. You don't have to do that if you're not. <laughs> So let me bring you in overhead. We'll get started. I think these are gonna be super cute. Fingers crossed. Now you can, um, obviously if you're using a thicker yarn, you could use a darning needle. You could, if you were doing this with children, you could hole punch um, holes or just use a little bit like an awl and kind of punch out holes for them to follow along so that if you were using a darning needle and this needle I'm feeling is not very pointy either so we'll see how that works um, but you could pre-punch holes for them to be able to follow with the yarn which I think would be a cute way of doing it with kids now I have got a small hole I'm a small hole small knot at the end and uh, just looking at the thickness of my needle I'm not sure that it's um, a big enough knot, so let me maybe make it a little bigger, if I can. All my knots are going in. There we go, there's a slightly bigger knot there. And I have done just a dot indicating that's my middle. Now this is a five by six and a half, so it gives a bit of an idea. I'm thinking if my first line started here, I have room for a star. Um, I don't think that all of your, I'm gonna punch a hole down there so that I know where to start. Take the guesswork out of this. Perfect and easily I can go down. Once I have this first line done, then my next row becomes a little easier because everything works off of this. It's just a question of deciding how far out I want my next branch to go and how far down. 
And I just want to do that little hole punch down. I think that's always going to help me be able to get that next row straight. So this is just embroidery floss. I did not thin it out so that I have some nice, decent, thick lines. And I'm just kind of guesstimating. As I said, you could measure this out, draw in all of your, your dots ahead of time, where you're going up, where you're coming down. And for this one, it's pretty straightforward because we're just doing some nice straight lines. I'm not sure that I'm always gonna do trunks, sometimes bases maybe, um, sometimes I may do down the middle. It really depends upon the pattern. So here's where you get to just kind of create trees however you want. Oh, you're up a little higher. I'll live with it. Now, I still want to do more, but I've run out of thread of, of my yarn. So I'm just going to tie a quick knot in the back. This on the inside of the card will be covered. All right, so we can definitely tie off our knots back here. We still want them to be fairly smooth, but we can get that tied off so it holds. And then I can add more and start doing a little bit more, although this is getting wide very fast. <laughs> so I maybe didn't need to go out as much on the ends to be able to get skinnier trees, but I'll do that on another one. Oops. I am gonna put a little bit of a trunk on this one because one, it's a little cockeyed, two, it doesn't cover the whole card. <laughs> you know, first one, first one blues. Um, and I'm just gonna go roughly up and down. And here I want them to line up, so I'm just making sure that I can see where it goes. And I'll get that trunk added. For the star, I've, I've learned now I need to punch my holes. <laughs> I need to just line them up, draw those little basic dots from line to line, and then things will be spaced nicely. So I'm doing that now for this, but I'm gonna do it for my future items as well. So I've just done, done the five points and I'm going to do it as I would um, drawing it. and then I will go in the opposite direction, right? So that ultimately it all gets filled in here. Okay, star enough. Pretty simple, pretty basic for a first go, but that's how I like to start. Use the first one as a bit of my guide in terms of my lessons, my learning and then go from there. So let me tie this one off and um, I'm gonna pull another one out because I'm looking at it going, I can do better. So let's see where we go now. All right, for this one, I have three trees, one tall one here, shorter one and another medium sized one. They are all gonna share the same spots on the bottom, though I'm looking kind of going, I kind of like them even. So let's measure that. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm better with doing measuring. So I'm just gonna poke a hole in each of those main areas. And then ah, 
There we go. And I think I'm gonna start with the edge ones. So I'm gonna take a different colored green for the two outside trees compared to the one in the middle, just so that we get some contrast. Start from the top. And come all the way down. Go across. jump over to the other side. And do the same there. Perfect. Okay, now, which side am I on here? <laughs> I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna go across the bottom on those ones. So you can see, this is what it looks like on the back compared to our design on the front. But it's the front that counts. Now, you could embellish these however you want. You could glue on little beads, sequins, mini buttons. You could sew them on. You could just take out markers and add details. I just wanna stick with all thread if I can which is fairly adventuresome of me given my lack of sewing skills. Um, I've punched in some holes into the trees thinking, okay, I'd like some balls on there. So I'm gonna take my needle, wrap it, one, two, three, four, five, six, Okay, so that was five, that's kind of tiny. But that could just be me. All right, let's carry on. You can see how immediately that just kind of picks things up a little. Once your cards are done, then you're going to want to back that so that it doesn't, nobody sees that mess. Now you can either just cut a piece that kind of fits in there. Or you could do double and then put a piece of white paper in to be able to write on, right? To, to be able to have the sentiments on there. So you're just going to do it right out to the edges. Just make sure that then all of those bad ends are hidden. We have cute little cards. Now, if you feel you have a little too much white space, you can take, I mean, in this instance, I'm just taking chalk and you can kind of rough in the edges. You could take some antiquing, um, inks, I was thinking gels, antiquing inks and doing that just so that you don't have as much white space, or you could just leave it, whatever you prefer. All right, 
I have to tell you, um, as much as I started kind of wonky, <laughs> they started to get better. They started to improve, right? And we've got the nice little Christmas on the inside. Um, I like this one. And here's the thing with this. Not everything has to be, um, not everything has to be sales worthy. I, I get that I have a shop, but not everything that I do has to be for the shop. Some things are just, hey, I'm having fun doing this and I'm gonna use it on Christmas gifts. I think that this, as I started going and I, and I got more of an opportunity to think about it, because I always think about things better when I'm actually trialing it, when I'm actually doing it. Um, I like the idea of having the patterns. I think that this is child friendly. I think it can be senior friendly. I would just take a little, um, a little small fine punch, just a little all, just a little needle, darning needle, and I would put the holes in for them and then have the pattern for them to follow. This is roughly what it's supposed to look like. And then they can see oh, this is what happens with the holes. If you had a little sample done up, that helps too. Um, but I think that, you know, doing the little bit of sewing, especially with littles, if you're doing it with darning needles so they don't have a sharp point, um, I think that they could have a lot of fun with this. I think it can help develop fine motor skills. So again, even with seniors, giving them something that doesn't require uh, so much fine motor skill that it's awkward for arthritic hands, but I think that this could also be great and, and a fun way for them to be making Christmas cards to be able to gift to their loved ones. So, um, not, not uh, maybe the biggest, most creative aha craft that there is, but I think that it's one that is doable by just about anybody and that you could have a lot of fun with. And sometimes I think that's more important. If you wanted to be able to have, you know, little little um, decorative item and items to be able to glue on, you know, little balls, little pom-poms, little buttons, um, sequins, anything like that, that, you know, they zhuzh, zhuzh up the basic tree with that as well, then that just kind of extends the fun. And I think that um, you could have a lot of fun making these with your kids. Or, it, you know, if you work in a senior facility, letting them have a lot of fun making some things that are very giftable for them and that they're going to want cards to, to be able to give out, whether they're putting a little money in, they're just putting in a little um, heartfelt comment, whatever. I hope that you see the possibilities of this, see beyond, um, I got better and I got better with smaller, quite honestly. Smaller was easier for me. So I, I ended up cutting down the big card into a smaller card and I found this easier for me. Um, probably because of my limited sewing skills. But there's the thing, if I can do it, anybody can do it because uh, I, I don't know why I don't have the patience for sewing, but I don't. <laughs> and I get that I do other things that are really picky by other people's standards, like the needle felting where people are going, I don't have the patience for that. I don't know what, it's like, it's just a me thing. But again, I did it. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Always love to hear from you. And I definitely look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.